Good afternoon. I hope this daily connection finds you well. For our connection for this day, it's going to talk about church history. Whoop, whoop. Doesn't that sound like excitement? Um, this Sunday is the third Sunday of the month, and Christine will be sharing with us a bit about our church's history in the decade 1960 to 1969. However, I wanted to give you some context. Um, Christine and I were talking about how do we frame this conversation, especially for the 60s, so that you have a snapshot of all the things that happened here and why they happened. So I'm going to give you a little short course history lesson on uh, the UCC and a lot of this um, um, Christine pulled together and it's also some of the things that you can find on online at the uh, ucc.org website and it comes from the short course in United Church of Christ history. So here it goes. Um, two world wars and religious sectarianism had made a clear need for the church to take seriously the responsibility as agents of God's healing and repentance to acknowledge in its divisions a mutual need for Christ's redemption. There was a lot of turmoil, especially after the two world wars. Um, what, what was church going to look like? And especially when we consider the four strands of what the United Church of Christ came from, the Christian Church, the Congregational Church, the Evangelical, and the Reformed Churches, everyone was unsettled. The denominations were unsettled, and they were trying to figure out how can we be a faithful body of people working together for the common good. That's my side note. All right. The World Council of Churches, Protestant and Orthodox, met at Amsterdam in 1948 under the theme, Man's Disorder and God's Design. In 1961, it merged with the International Missionary Council. The Second Vatican Council at Rome, called by Pope John the 23rd, met between 1962 and 1965 with a primary purpose of peace and unity ending with a re-emphasis on ecumenicity. The Pope participated in a joint religious service with non-Catholic Christian observers and resolved to remove from memory the events of AD 1054 that first split the Christian Church in two halves, the Catholic and the Orthodox. Second Vatican, big time. That was a big deal in our church's history, and it still is a big deal in our church's history. Between 1900 and 1950, congregational churches of 10 nations united with other denominations, and many of them losing the name congregational. Others followed as the United Church movement uh, proliferated. Then in the United States, the Christian Church, perhaps because of its long travail over its own north-south division and its disinterest in organizational structure, had remained separatist. The Christian Church, um, out of the four strands that became the United Church of Christ, the Christian Church was the one denomination that was founded here in the United States. The other uh, strands, the Evangelical and Reformed, came from the German, uh, German Prussia area, and the Congregational, the Congregationalist movement came primarily from England. With um, that Christian separatist group, the correspondence with the Congregationalists led to a meeting in 1926 with a decision to pursue union. And on June 27, 1931, at Seattle, Washington, the Christian Church, with a membership of 100,000, including 30,000 members of the 65 churches in its Afro-American Convention, joined with the Congregational Churches of nearly a million members. The Evangelical and Reformed Churches also saw the Church Universal as a denomination that would enable a faithful resource to the biblical word of God at any time and in any place among any people. In 1918, the Reformed Church produced a plan of federal union in hope of uniting churches of the Reformed heritage. And in 1925, the Evangelical Synod of North America undertook a similar negotiation. After six years of negotiation, a plan of union evolved 
approved in 1932 by the General Synod of the Reformed Church, ratified by the Evangelical Synod at its General Convention in 1933. Significant and unprecedented was the decision to unite. On June 26, 1934, the Evangelical and Reformed Church was born at Cleveland, Ohio. Congregational Christian and Evangelical and Reformed Church leaders already had begun private conversation about union when German Evangelical pastor Martin Niemöller was incarcerated in Nazi Germany for preaching the Christian gospel from his prominent Berlin pulpit. He boldly opposed the persecution of Jews, and on Christmas Eve 1938, United States Catholics and Protestants, inc including Congregational Christian and Evangelical Reform leaders, sent a message to the German people. A subtle shift in emphasis had gradually crept among the churches from a desire to evangelize the world to a concern for the needs of human society. Congregational Christian churches confronted a far rockier road to union in the United Church of Christ than their counterparts at the ENR, in the Evangelical and Reformed Church. During the late 1940s, early 1950s, multiple lawsuits were filed by individual congregational churches against the General Council. A 1949 ruling supporting the litigants' claim that the General Council has no power to undertake a union involving churches. And this opinion was reversed in 1953. So when the United Church of Christ then finally formed in 1957, June 25th, 1957, it was a huge undertaking because the Congregational and Christian churches decided that each one of their churches needed to vote in order to become a part of the United Church of Christ. Whereas the ENR churches, the Evangelical and Reformed churches, they voted as a unified bloc, which I had stated earlier. It was a rocky time within our church's history, our broader church's history. And yet you will see some of that then play out when you hear what Christine has to say about Hazel Park's history and how some of the votes we took took a while for it to be made clear what directions and what names would be, we would be called in light of our polity. One of the things that is truly breathtaking, magnificent, inspiring, and also maddening about the United Church of Christ is that we are to be in covenant with one another, and in being in covenant with one another, um, our polity says that we can decide for ourselves as a local church to be in covenant with the, de with the denomination, but also be in covenant with each other as a local church. For the denomination speaks to the local church, not for the local church. So there's a brief snippet of our history. Um, that uh, This stuff is included in your reading. Um, if you click on um, in our Daily Connection um, about the history, uh, the history piece, what I just read is a part of that. Um, and you'll see more about Hazel Park's history. But we wanted to give you a snapshot of the broader church history of what was going on because it was rocky but also truly fascinating. I hope this daily connection finds you well and I'll see you tomorrow for Gratitude Friday.